Swans Reserved have managed three in a row after defeating the Tricolours by 74 points at Ainsley. Ainsley were looking to bounce back from last week's loss, but facing the top of the table Sydney Swans was always going to be a tough challenge. The Swans came out firing, booting five goals in the first quarter, and a sensational defensive effort stopped Ainsley from scoring any goals in the first half, with the Sydney side holding a 70-point lead at the main break. Jason Fleming managed to boot two for Ainsley. He was the only player to boot more than one for the Tricolours. While Tommy Walsh had a great day, he scored seven goals for the Swans. Jesse White booted four and Tom Mitchell managed two with six other Swans players with a goal next to their names. Ainsley will be looking for a win against Tuggeranong while it should be a close one between the Swans and Belcom. Well, Conan are proving tough to beat with another win at Kipax, this time downing Broadbeach by 36 points. Bordine Loken runs into the open goal. That's his second. The Magpies held the lead from the start, up 19 at the first break. They booted four goals in the second quarter, keeping Broadbeach to one major to extend the lead to 36 at half time. Both sides racked up more goals in the third quarter with Belconnen leading 100 points to 50 at three-quarter time, but they pulled back a bit in the fourth. Belconnen's Matthew Loken had a sensational day. He managed a massive 12-goal haul. Is that 10? Yes, it is. You betcha. There's number 10 for Matthew Loken. Easy as it comes. He sidestepped them all. He made them all look silly. Yet. The standout for the Magpies, Christopher York, Damien Hector and Dominic Bunyan pitched in with two goals each. Benjamin Hancock did well for the Cats. He was best for Broadbeach, slotting five goals. Jake Greeley helped them out, scoring two, with five others pitching in. Loken, Daniel Jordan and James Bennett all performed well for the Magpies, while Hancock, Ryan Pantic and Darren Stewart were the best for Broadbeach. The Cats did come back in the last quarter, but Belconnen were too strong. They took the match 119 to 83. 12, that it is. Number 12 for Matthew Loken, if you don't mind. He's had a day out here at Kipax Oval. Yeah, it was a bloke down at full forward and wearing 17, bag 12. Not a bad effort, eh? Yeah, mate, I was due for one. So, um, look, our forward line's working well as a group, and I said that to one of the other boys today. I said it's not so much who kicks the goals, even though it's nice to do that every now and then. It's how we work for each other and we create space. So I thought as a group we were really good today um, across the ground. Our boys' effort uh, has been first class all year and uh, and it, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for them because uh, the our skill execution was uh, was deplorable and it hasn't been, you know, you've got you to acknowledge the opposition for the pressure they put under and they're a fantastic outfit. That's the best opposition we've played this year. Um, and. Uh, but you know we're not, we're not talking about poor decision making. We're talking about making right decisions and not being able to execute them. And um, I think the the margin flattered us really. The undefeated Brisbane Lions fought hard to keep a hold of their record with a second-placed Southport coming close to the win. It was a tough match in windy conditions. Southport held the lead at quarter time, but that was without registering any goals. 11 behinds gave the Sharks a five-point lead over Brisbane, who managed just one goal. Southport held on to the lead, going into the main break up by three points. The Lions were kept goalless in the third quarter as Southport pushed the lead out to 30 points by three-quarter time. But the Lions were resurgent in the fourth boot nine goals to Southport's two. Can he open the scoring in the fourth and final term? He can. Magnificent kick. Number 44, Aaron Cornelius. To come from behind to take the win. Benjamin Headland, Daniel Weiss and Jason Bird were the best performers for Southport, with Cleve Hughes and Glenn Screech scoring two goals each. He'll be the first multiple scorer for Southport this afternoon. He celebrates quickly, puts that one straight over the goal up by his head. Aaron Cornelius was the game's top goal scorer with four. It was a tough win for Brisbane in the end. The final score, 9-22-76 to 14-4-88. Eastlake has moved up into the top five with a good win against Sydney Uni. Uni won the first quarter, up by nine at the first break, but Eastlake came out firing in the second quarter, booting seven goals while restricting Sydney Uni to one goal and one behind. Eastlake held a 29-point lead at half-time and did not look back. The students kept up the fight, winning the third quarter, but they were still trailing by 27. 
Dean Ralston was on fire. He booted five of Eastlake's 15 goals. Samuel Mardling booted three, with Justin Mesman and Ricky Stoyanov scoring two goals. For Sydney Uni, Peter Dugmore scored three goals, with Thomas Elkington booting two. Ralston was the standout in his 150th game, with Chad Gibson and Ricky Stoyanov also doing well. Eastlake enjoyed their fourth win of the season, 15-13, 103-11, 9-75. The Gold Coast hit the road for a close match against AFL rivals, the UWS Giants. It was the Suns' second quarter efforts that won them the match after a close first quarter where both sides kicked five goals. The Suns booted seven big ones to the Giants' three to hold a 28-point lead at half-time. The rest of the game was fairly evenly matched. The Gold Coast Joshua Hall was strong in front of goals with four majors to his name. Michael Riscatelli was the Suns' best. He booted three. Sam Reid was best for the Giants. He was also the side's top goal scorer with four. Nathan Wilson also impressed. He booted three. The Suns are showing some good form with this win their third on the trot. Round 11 will be a challenge. They're up against the undefeated Brisbane Lions. The score at the final siren, 14-7-91 to 18-12-120. A strong win in windy conditions at Cook Murphy Oval with Aspley delivering Labrador their seventh loss of the season. Aspley started strong, booting six goals, six in the first quarter, keeping Labrador to just one. But the Tigers fought back in the second quarter to boot three goals to the Hornets' one to rein in Aspley's lead to 24 points. Aspley regrouped during half-time with a stellar second half. They booted 12 goals and only let Labrador get one more major. Jake Goldsmith and Nick Stockdale scored two each for Labrador, with Elliot Bath the side's only other goal scorer. While well, for Aspley, James Nellis and Shaney Stiller booted four each with Daniel Smith slotting two. Aspley, Leapfrog, NT Thunder and Morningside, who both had buys, to sit third on the ladder after the 95-point win. A close encounter at Greenway with Tugranong and Hills Eagles fairly evenly matched. The Hawks held a narrow three-point lead at the first break, scoring four goals one to Hills Eagles three goals four. The second quarter was just as close, with Hills Eagles' inaccuracy costing them a lead. Instead, Tugranong held on to a one-point lead. The Sydney side picked up in the third quarter, booting four goals and three behinds, while keeping the Hawks to just two goals. Another tight quarter in the last, but in the end, Hills Eagles took the game by just eight points. The goal scoring was widespread for Tuggeranong. Michael Folk scoring three goals, with Sean Kelly booting two. Seven others contributed to the side's 12 goals. For Hills Eagles, Damien Bonney was strongest in front of goal. He booted three. Stephen Doyle, Trent Stubbs and Scott Reid helped out with three each. The final score, 12-7-79 to 12-15-87. <laughs> Redland managed their third win in a row with their clash against Mount Gravatt at Victoria Point. The Bombers looked good from the start, leading 40-17 to at the first break. By half-time, the score was 83-31. Redland kept the Vultures goalless in the third quarter to extend their lead to 99 points. They piled on six more goals in the final quarter, with Mount Gravatt scoring two goals and four behinds. Josh Pullman was a force in front of goal with a 10-goal haul. Stephen Gartner helped out with four. Philip Cass scored three with Zane Pringle and Joshua Veering scoring two each. Daniel Zufa was the best for the Bombers with Josh Pullman's goal-scoring efforts earning him a mention. Mount Gravatt will be hoping for their first win of the season when they take on Broad Beach, while the Bombers will enjoy the week off after their 168-48 to win. Looking at the northern ladder, the Brisbane Lions are still sitting strong on top with eight wins from eight games. Southport in second, followed by Aspley, the Gold Coast and Morningside with five wins each. The NT Thunder sit in sixth, Redland in seventh, followed by Broadbeach, then Labrador, with Mount Gravatt winless after ten rounds. The Sydney Swans are flying high on top of the Eastern Conference ladder, dropping just one game this season. Belconnen a second, then Queanbeyan in third. Ainsley and Eastlake round out the top five. 
UWS Giants are in sixth, followed by Hills Eagles and Sydney Uni, with Tuggeranong in ninth. Sydney Uni take on Labrador in round 11. A top of the table clash at the SCG will see the Sydney Swans and Belconnen do battle. Tuggeranong host Ainsley. Hills Eagles v UWS Giants at Bruce Purser. Eastlake take on Queanbeyan. Brisbane Lions are hoping to stay undefeated against the Gold Coast Suns. Morningside are up against Aspley, while Mount Gravatt are aiming for win number one against Broadbeach. For more info, head to neeple.com.au and to stay up to date with Neeple fixtures, results and news, simply download the Neeple app from the App Store.